it has been amazing for me to really discover the nature of my mind and the nature of reality and to become clearer and clearer about what that is and how it works and um, the way that the misunderstanding in the way that my mind worked and the ways I'd learned in terms of how to manage my experience um, had affected all aspects of my life. Um, yeah, anger and irritation is just such a brilliant example. Because when I look back, so everybody was irritating. Like, e everybody was irritating and it seemed like the more I got to know someone or the more time I spent with them, the more irritating <laughs> they got. And um, it's not hard to see how that would have consequences in any relationship. <laughs> And uh, the more intimate the relationship, the more intimate the irritation. And, um, <laughs> and then anger as well. I, I never really thought of myself as an angry person because I just thought that it, it was really normal because, you know, just, just things made me angry like all day. Because things don't work, things go wrong, people let you down. It's too hot, you know, there's loads of things to be angry about and so it's really normal just to be angry. And, um, but I didn't really think of myself as an angry person. And I have one friend and um, it's, I think it's really great, he, he thinks that Balanced View is an anger management program <laughs> just because of the difference that he's seen in me. And, um, and the difference now is, is that I still find everyone irritating <laughs> and I'm still angry a lot of the time so that hasn't changed but what has changed is my understanding as to what anger and irritation are and the relationship to them that I have as open intelligence and this is completely different because previously I behaved as if they were these things kind of out there, you know, these, these labels, these descriptions, anger or irritation, and that when I had these thoughts or these feelings, then um, it would just naturally inform the way that I acted and the way that I spoke and the way that I related and behaved. And that just seemed to be the way that it was. And um, it, it's like they had power over me, so when I felt angry, then that was expressed in the way that I spoke and, you know, just, just everything that I was. And so to be introduced to, first of all, the complete openness of mind and to recognize that there is this total openness of perception that is clear like a sky, clear like the sky, and that this is naturally present and that this is the basis of my experience, whatever's going on. And first of all, to identify that is key in our own experience right now and you can test this now and the fact that you can test this now is actually amazing because there is nothing special about this particular now. This isn't some special here and now. So if you stop thinking for a moment, boom! <laughs> there it is. What's looking? What's thinking? What's experiencing everything right now? There's an intelligence, an alertness an awareness, a cognizance, the capacity to know. So you can identify this in this instant. So the fact that you can identify it in this instant, really just that one time proves that it is always there. But to take that from um, an intellectual recognition into an instinctive recognition is key. And so this is where we have um, instructions in the training, suggestions, where you can find out for yourself whether that is really the case or not. And so this is the practice of short moments. And it's short moments repeated many times. So as you go throughout your day with whatever comes up for you, anger, irritation, or whatever else it might be, you can repeat this simple test of just for a short moment, relaxing the need to describe further what's going on. Because my experience was that there was this constant commentary or description on what was going on. So this person is really irritating, I wish they'd stop saying what they're saying, don't they know how much it's irritating me, they always do this. I, I, you know, this, is the, this is the elaboration. So for a short moment you can cut that story, J just stop completely, stop describing, and again recognize the alertness 
that is experiencing everything you're experiencing, thinking everything you're thinking, feeling everything you're feeling, just for one instant. And in that way you get to see that whatever it is that you're experiencing is inseparable from this vastness of mind. So you wouldn't experience the capacity to know without knowing something. Another way to put that in the terms that we use here are that there is this open intelligence that is the basis of all of your experience and within this open intelligence there is this constant stream of data. So thoughts, emotions, sensations, anger, irritation, happiness, all of just streaming in open intelligence as open intelligence. Nothing appearing anywhere other than in, of, as and through this open intelligence, including anger and irritation. But to know that intellectually and to experience it instinctively is two very different things, as one great teacher said. And to experience something like anger or irritation whilst relying on open intelligence changes everything. And it is in this instinctive recognition of the inseparability of anger and irritation from this vastness of mind that first of all we discover just how vast, how incredible, how precise and how brilliant our mind really is and that we have the capacity to respond in every time, place and circumstance in a way that is of benefit to all. And we discover that in the instinctive recognition of the inseparability of open intelligence and its own data. So the content of the mind as being inseparable from the mind. One short moment at a time, recognizing that directly, just stopping all of the descriptions, acknowledging this openness of mind and to see that it is inclusive of all data. All thoughts, emotions and sensations are nothing other than the dynamic energy of mind. And so the difference now with anger and irritation is that when it comes up, which fortunately is a lot, it is a reminder to relax and to rely on and recognize open intelligence whilst feeling the anger and irritation. And when I do that, all of the labels and descriptions I had around it, and one of the ones that hadn't even occurred to me, was that um, somewhere along the way I had learned that I shouldn't feel anger and irritation. And this caused me huge conflict, this made me even more angry and irritated because somewhere along the line I had taken on the idea that I shouldn't feel angry and irritated. And since I did feel angry and irritated then that just made it all even worse because I then blamed myself for feeling angry and irritated. Or I blamed somebody else for seeming to make me angry or irritated. And so to relax all of the descriptions, to allow everything to rest naturally, to see that everything arises spontaneously and self-releases without me needing to do anything, like a, a, a snake in a knot just naturally undoes itself effortlessly. And so relaxing with anger and irritation just for one short moment allows me access to its great beneficial potency. Because when I don't describe it, when I'm not caught up in these limiting descriptions around what it is, how I should feel it or shouldn't feel it, how I need to respond when I do feel these sensations and just leaving it completely wide open. All I find is this vastness of mind inclusive of this incredible dynamic energy that I'd learned to label as anger or irritation or happiness or sadness. Allowing all labels just to be completely wide open, not needing to try and fix anything in place but relaxing as this spontaneous reality. Then anger and irritation become available to me to use in a way that will be of benefit. That dynamic energy can be expressed in whatever way I choose then. So if I do choose to speak or act whilst there is this raging anger or irritation, whilst relying on open intelligence, there is incredible power there. Like you know when you're angry. Nobody has to tell you when you're angry. But when you actually allow that feeling to be as it is, even for one short moment, everything opens up. 
and what you have is a clarity of mind, but also the capacity to utilize this energy to speak with directness. You can utilize this energy to rest so deeply that nothing needs to be said. You will see exactly what needs to be done that will be of most benefit to all when you allow the data, the descriptions, the experience just to be as it is. And there is no way that you can understand this intellectually. You can't sit and think about this and work out whether that is correct or not. But you can test out for short moments and see in your own experience what happens when you put this into practice. And so this training is really practical and really experiential. It's about your own experience of relying on open intelligence for short moments. And then what you'll find here is that there is a support network that will really support and encourage and empower you to see that you do have this choice in every instant. And that the ideas that we have about ourselves as being these limited beings somehow caught within this flesh suit or this skin line, that our intelligence is caught within here, that we are limited in so many ways in terms of what we can do, who we are. Through the practice and through the training, these learned limitations and ideas just become clearer and clearer. And we see that actually when we rely on open intelligence, the power that we have to be of benefit is so far beyond anything I'd learned. And that the capacity of my mind and my intelligence to provide this exact solution in every time, place and circumstance really is accessing the intelligence of the universe. And again, that is not something to think about, it's something to test out. What happens when I rely on open intelligence right now? Just resting naturally, allowing all of the descriptions just to be as they are. And just repeat that naturally throughout your day whenever you remember. You can listen to talks. And there is thousands of hours of free media to access at the back of the hall or on the website. And the talks just confirm your capacity to do this. Again and again, reminding you that you can do this hearing other people's experience. Well, what's it been like for them when they've rested with anger or irritation or sadness or depression or grief or whatever it is? Seeing that it's the same solution being applied in each of these circumstances. And so this is why the repetition is really powerful and important. We've trained to use our mind in one particular way, now we're retraining it to be used in a, in a completely different way, to actually unlock its real capacity. It's like I, I knew I wasn't being told something about the nature of reality in the education that I had. There was something about me and about my experience that wasn't being addressed, no matter where I looked. And I looked in all kinds of places, conventional and unconventional. But nothing, there was something missing, some key bit of information. And that is the recognition of the inseparability of open intelligence and data. And then having a practice and a support for me to apply that in my everyday life experience. Because without that, it was so easy to get caught back up in the descriptions again. And then having the reminder to return just to open intelligence for a short moment. And the trainings are so powerful, like really, really powerful, if you want to deepen this practice and this recognition. And um, yeah, I was very sceptical about everything, everything. And. Um, and I'm actually really glad about that because um, it meant that I didn't get involved in a lot of things that I, um, I'm, so, I'm really trying not to swear, a lot, of, a lot of things that might not have been of worthwhile use of my time. That's good, isn't it? Diplomatic. And, um, but when I came here, there was just enough openness to test out the instructions and it was amazing. I saw these immediate results. And then I was open enough to begin testing the trainings and the results just blossomed and bloomed. And um, so then I continued on. It was like, oh, great, I want more of this. I want to understand what's going on. I want to understand my own experience and the nature of reality. I want to know how to live my life in a way that I've always known was possible, but nobody could tell me how. And no matter what I think about what's going on here, about the structures or the format or the presentation, does it work? That would be a good question to ask yourself. Does it work? 